Hey viewers, this is Fernando from SkyFi Audio. Today I thought I'd do a primer on reel-to-reel -reel machines. If you haven't had a reel-to-reel -reel machine or don't really understand what the big fuss is around, this might be worth 10 minutes of your time. Um, to, in front of me is a Tanberg TD20A reel-to-reel -reel from 1980s. This is about the last Tanberg reel-to-reel -reel made. Um, it's a beautiful piece. It goes nicely with their 3000 series um, set of, of components, preamps, amps, and tuners, etc., which I am a big fan of. I actually have a personal collection of, of the best of Tanberg from the 1980s, 1990s, um, including their 3014 cassette deck, which is one of our favorite ones. So it's a little earlier than the 3000 series, but it has the same sort of look and feel, and um, it's 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 a business look, right? There's no frills in this machine. Everything's laid out just at the right place. There's no superfluous buttons or displays or anything like that. And uh, let me go over some of the specs and what to look for when buying perhaps your first reel-to-reel. -reel. Um, so the first thing to understand is the number of tracks, which is a little confusing. There's a lot, you could read all day on the internet and not really understand what do we mean when we talk about tracks versus channels. Uh, Etc. So the first thing is for residential use if you're not a, a pro audio person or you, you don't run a, a small recording studio at home or or band the first thing to look for is two meters That's that's key here if you see a machine with four meters six or even eight uh, stay away from that That's not for the audiophile the audiophile wants a two-channel machine Which is what this uh, meters represent so it's really just a left and a right channel not much else to it. A four channel machine would allow you to perhaps in a studio, a home studio record a guitar track on one, a vocal track on the other, or maybe drums and the piano on the fourth, right? And allow you to kind of mix them to see uh, what volume you wanted each of them at. Not so for the standard audio file. You're gonna want two channels left and right and stay away from four meters. The other is the number of tracks. Uh, this happens to be a four track machine. The best way to understand a four track machine is to compare it to cassette deck. The typical standard cassette deck is in fact a four track machine. I've got a cassette deck right here. I've got a Nakamichi cassette deck. If you were to look at this uh, tape um, surface, it would have uh, four tracks. In other words, four lines of music running along the tape path. And just like on a cassette deck where you can have a one song playing one side in stereo, you flip it over, you get a second song. Uh, and that's what a, this machine is capable of doing. Um, this particular model, being a four track unit, can record a stereo song on one side of the tape, then we flip it over, meaning we reverse the left and right reels, and you've got a secondary song on the other side. So you can double up the amount of information in the machine. Now there are consumer level two-track machines that allow you to just play in one direction but utilize a much bigger area of the tape. If you kind of picture the tape right here, um, if we were to squeeze four tracks in there we'd have probably about a sixteenth of an inch of tape per track. But if we were going to just squeeze two tracks we'd probably get an eighth of an inch which is twice as much room for information, which means you get a, a higher quality and better or, or less interference between what's recorded on one side versus the other. So for example, uh, Techniques. Techniques, let me walk over here, makes a series of two track machines. So two channels, two tracks, meaning that we can only record in one direction. This is a RS1500, here you see, two track machine. So this is a step up from a four track, um, but you don't have as much room to put music onto uh, the tape. All right, let me go back to the Tenberg. All right, so the first thing we learn is the two track versus two, four tracks, two channels we've talked about, that's two meters, and the fact that it's stereo. That's the general specification of this machine. Now, let's talk about the heads. Now again, very similar to uh, a tape deck. 
or at least a high-end tape deck where we've got a three head design you can kind of see all three heads right here uh, one being uh, a record one being a playback and the last one being an erase so this allows you essentially separate functions for each of those operations um, most uh, reel to reels of this caliper will have three heads some might even have a fourth head separating it further uh, but this is pretty standard the beauty of having separate record and playback heads is that it allows you to sort of listen to what you're recording while it's happening in other words as the tape is coming from left to right you're recording the material in the record head and then half a second later you're playing it back in the playback head so you can actually monitor your recording live so if you put, for example, a set of headphones into this jack here and start a recording, you can immediately hear the results of that recording as it plays it back half a second later. So it's an important function. It's also available on some high-end cassette decks like um, our favorite uh, Nakamichi Dragon or our CR7A or even the Tamburg 3014 will have a button that allows you to flip between the tape and the source. And that button on this particular machine, it is going to be right here, this monitor button. So when I got it in tape, I'm hearing what's on the tape. When I put it on source, I'm hearing what is being fed into the machine from whatever your recording source happens to be. The other thing to look at is for speeds. Now they come in, in, in a certain, you know, they come in, in, in intervals, like the first speed generally available at a consumer level is about three and three quarters. Um, there are some machines that go even slower, for example, a dictation machine or a reel-to-reel -reel that you would have used to record and monitor phone calls or spy on someone where quality is not that important, you would go even below three and three quarters. But at a sort of consumer level, three and three quarters is the slowest of the speeds. In this case, on this machine, that is represented by the low number or the low designation here while the high speed for this machine is seven and a half so you double the three and three quarters you get seven and a half and that's inches per second uh, which means that we're traveling the tape is traveling that much in a particular second interval doubling that takes you to 15 ips this machine cannot do that for that you would go to one of the techniques or uh, maybe a little bit of a more prosumer level machine but seven and a half tends to be a really good speed for recording at home. We get really nice quality out of a good tape that way, and you get quite a bit of recording time in the reels themselves. Uh, this machine, you'll notice, has the larger of the reels. This is 10 and a half inches. That is the diameter from here to here. And I don't know how many feet, but there's a ton of feet in one of these tapes. Now, um, the tapes are fed from left to right, meaning that on playback, you would load up your tape onto the left side, and as it goes forward, you would take it up on your take-up reel, and that's where it winds. Um, when you get to the end of the machine, you would either flip it, meaning inverting the two reels, or you would rewind it, in this case, using the rewind function. And this is, again, much like a cassette deck, right? It's just in a much, much larger scale. So here's the machine speeding up, hit the stop button, and you're ready for playback, which is situated right here. Let's see, we've got... Let me see on my... Oh, darling, darling, darling. Got some Led Zeppelin loaded onto this uh, quarter inch tape. Let me turn on the volume. All right, so that's another thing I failed to mention. This is in fact a quarter inch tape, meaning the, the width of the ta tape is, is a quarter of an inch. Um, on machines that are meant for studio, you're gonna find a wider tape, maybe half inch or even one inch uh, to fit more tracks and more information into the tape. So. Um, and this, that's really the reason why this sounds much, much better than a cassette deck. A cassette deck has about half of that surface area on the tape. So this is twice as good in terms of um, the available storage space. All right, so what else to tell you about? The machine itself has a fairly high r frequency range. It starts at 20 hertz and it goes all the way to three, th I'm sorry, 30 kilohertz. 
Now that's far superior than a tape DAC. Uh, most tape DACs, even the best ones, will kind of max out around 20 kilohertz, uh, while a tape of, of this quality will go to 30, which is quite a bit of difference in terms of headroom. Signal to noise ratio is about 66 dB, not that important. And um, I think distortion is measured around 2% or something, which is a little high, but uh, good enough for, for home use. All right, um, let me go through the buttons so you can understand what we're looking at. Um, power button here, this is the speed button, low and high. Remember, this is the difference between three and three quarters and center and a half. This one is for the size of the reel. This affects the tension on these reels. Uh, if you look here, we've got a, a tensioner here that keeps this tape tight so it doesn't start flopping and miswinding. Um, so how much pressure is applied in these particular points is important for the proper tape tension and uh, letting the machine know whether we're using the 10 and a half inch reels or their smaller reels is something that has to be done manually through this button. The tape path we've discussed, you see some pinch rollers there and some cap stands and all the little doohickeys needed to proper operation. Um, here is the record button and this is just like a cassette deck where you would put press record and play at the same time. I'm gonna stop. Here's our rewind. And here's back to our play. Back to the, this side, we've got outputs, both left and right output levels. Uh, a mode, whether we're recording or playback from stereo left or right, we just want to play one channel. Um, next button is the sync button, which I have no idea what it does. Uh, tape and source we've covered, that's to listen to the source material versus what's on the tape. Um, in the edit queue, this is, I believe this is so you can hear what's on the tape as you're moving it. Uh, headphones, mic, left and mic right. This is in case you're recording microphones, you could plug them in right here and select uh, the microphone as the input versus the line level on the back of the unit. These two volumes are for setting the record volume of the microphones. These two buttons are for setting the record level of line input. And these are the bias adjustments for left and right uh, according to your type of tape and, and what you've, how you've selected it. Master control is your master recording volume. And the equalization is flipped between special and normal. That's some built-in EQ functions. There is a DIN connector here for a wired remote control. And the counter, the uh, venerable four-digit tape counter, which can be reset through this button here. Okay. Having a look at the back. Oops. Um, here is the non-standard uh, Tamburg power cord. Make sure you get one if you ever got one of these machines. They're tricky to find. TD20ASE. There was, in fact, an SES as well, which had balanced inputs and outputs uh, for studio or semi-studio use. Here's a four-track designation, uh, 60 hertz. I'm sorry, four track, seven and a half and three and three quarter IPS, 115 volts, 60 hertz. Here are the outputs in RCA form, and then line one and line two inputs for your recording materials. Really nice made, it's got a black casing on it. It's a little fragile, the casing, so if you ever bang it, it'll definitely chip. It's not the highest quality wood, but I assure you the internal components, the quality of the heads, the quality of the electronics are, are really, really good for a tape deck of this level. So who would want a machine like this? Well, ardent audiophiles and people that are looking to kind of experiment with new things. Uh, this is a far superior format to a cassette deck. It is above the quality of most LPs, um, mostly because the amount of information you can fit on them and the speed at which you're processing that information at. I can get a much, much higher quality recording out of a, a good reel-to-reel -reel tape than I can in any sort of pre-pressed record that I've personally seen. Um, so how would you use this machine since buying pre-recorded music is almost impossible? There are in fact a few people out there now making pre-recorded uh, music onto reel-to-reel, -reel, but they tend to be super expensive and limited in the collection. So um, what I tend to do with reel-to-reel -reel is I I like putting stuff that I enjoy, 
You know, if I've got a, a really good pressing of a record and I want to transfer it somewhere before I scratch it and, and wear it out, I'll put it onto a reel-to-reel -reel tape. Yes, I could also put it onto digital format, but that's no fun. Staying in the analog domain, as far as I'm concerned, is, is the way to do this. It's a great, warm, pleasant, highly accurate sound that I can't seem to get out of a digital recording. Um, also, reel-to-reels -reel just look amazing. You know, there's no piece of equipment in, in a stereo system that looks as interesting as a reel-to-reel, -reel, in my opinion. I just love the look of it. I like playing with it, operating it. It's really just a lot of fun. So, yeah, it's a little inconvenient. <laughs> you know, managing the tapes and feeding it through the machine and all that is, is obviously less convenient than your average record, but it's super satisfying and a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of my clients will buy one of these machines as sort of the icing on the cake of their stereo, sit it on top, put some cool reels on it, and use it once in a blue moon and still enjoy just looking at it and having it in their system. Alright, so other models to consider besides the Tanberg, well there's the Techniques RS1500 that I mentioned, there's a 1700 different variation of heads and channels and tracks. Uh, Akai makes a cool machine, I think it's a model 2000 and Revox. We've got a lot of Revox here, uh, 700s, the, um, um, and then from Revox you can go into some of the higher quality, you know, professional versions which are made by Studer, uh, which you'll see on our website as well. So that tends to be about most of the machines that you'll see out in the market. There are some Sonys out there. Oh, Pioneer makes a cool one, the 7909. It's a really neat machine from Pioneer. Got one kicking around here somewhere. And then you can get into more vintage machines. Up here, you'll see we've got uh, an earlier Pioneer. We've got a real early Revox uh, and some of the crowns. Those are really collectible pieces. Uh, that, happens to, that crown up there happens to be, I think, a tube machine that's been refurbished. Um, let me look at the rack to see what else. Oh, here is a, uh, a Rebox. It's waiting some TLC from us. I think it's an A or B700. I showed you this uh, Techniques. And then right above it we've got an A700. And then this one here is another A700. And then above it that must be the oh, a Piac X1000R. And then all the way up there, I'm not sure if you can see it, is the TIAC I mentioned. That's a cool machine. It's the X2000M. That's the machine that was featured in uh, nine and a half weeks. No, sorry. Uh, that was in the Quentin Tarantino movie uh, Pulp Fiction, one of our absolute favorites. Um, all right, so here you have it. A quick tutorial on... Uh, consumer level reel to reel machine. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let us know what I've got wrong in the comments section. I'm sure I made at least three or four mistakes in model numbers and specifications. Um, and also if you enjoy these videos, please uh, subscribe and, uh, and hit the notification button so you know when the next video is coming up. And that'll keep us motivated to keep doing videos for you. So skyfiaudio.com is our website. We'll see five, 600 items like this machine uh, I think I have two or three of these that are just going through our rejuvenation process. If you don't see one available, give us a ring. You can get on the waiting list for it. So skyfire.com. Uh, thanks for watching.